Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending our talk on marketplace investments today. I'm Lynn, and my team is responsible for ensuring reliability in real time for Uber, but we do this months in advance. So a little bit about me. I'm currently a senior product manager at Uber, and I work on the marketplace team. My team is specifically responsible for forecasting and investments, so we facilitate hundreds of millions of dollars of investments for our riders and drivers. And we do that through forecasting for uh, 600 plus cities, uh, computing about 5 billion data points of forecast per minute. A year ago, I was actually in the audience uh, in your shoes, listening in on Uber Tech Day as well. And I was really inspired by the technology and the problem space here, and it really encouraged me to look into working for Uber. So I hope today you're just as inspired by our conference and that you're interested in working for Uber as well. Sorry, so going back to my talk about the marketplace architecture. So before we go into my team, I do want to cover how marketplace operates overall. In marketplace, we have the rider and driver components, and we also have the real-time dynamics system. They all feed into our measurement systems and they go backwards into our forecasting investments so that we facilitate these decisions and coordinate rider and driver both from months in advance planning all the way into real-time planning. So we're going to focus on the, the green area for today. The agenda is that we're going to have a, first off, the key takeaways for my talk. And then we're going to have a discussion on why investments matter. We'll look into, we'll look into the problem spaces that we're solving for and the solutions that we provide to solve for them. My team's mission is to enable our investments to deliver real-time flawless experiences for our riders and drivers. The takeaways for this talk is that in order to enable real-time experiences that are flawless, we need to work backwards months in advance. And the problem spaces between real-time and months in advance are pretty similar. They're aligned to, just, to really serve a balanced and healthy growth in our market. And because our supply and demand are constantly moving, this time geo-optimization is extremely challenging to balance. And you'll see that in one of our examples. And of course, our solutions are centralized. So we need to solve this type of problem space for 500 global cities at hundreds of millions of dollars per quarter. Going into why investments matter to begin with. We think about investments from the customer journey's perspective. If you think about Uber, the time it takes for you to request a ride and get home on average is about 15 minutes. But for us, it takes months of planning to deliver this real-time experience and to make it flawless. So when we think about months in advance, we actually have to work backwards. So before you request your trip, we think about the minutes and hours prior and how we can get our drivers to be at the right place, right time in order to be, be within a five minute request distance from you. Days and hours prior, we actually have to help our drivers plan for their weeks, plan for the hours of the week on when and where to drive. Weeks in advance, we need to ensure that Uber is a compelling experience for both our riders and drivers so that they will actually choose our platform as the rideshare choice. In months prior to that, we really care about loyalty and long-term value for both our riders and our drivers so that we have a continuous stream of reliable service and we continue to grow upon our services. We also try to think about future value for our non-customers and, and encourage them to leverage Uber as the rideshare platform of choice. And we do this across both our riders and drivers in Marketplace. And that's where Marketplace Investments exists. We sit in the middle to facilitate these decisions across time horizons to ensure that that 15 minutes is flawless for you. So working backwards across time, it's extremely important for us to begin with the end in mind. And across any time horizon, whether it's 15 minutes before your trip, hours before, weeks, or months, we imagine what it would take and what we need to do to enable this 15 minutes of five minutes ETA between you and your driver. And of course, we do this for every trip at 5 billion trips annually for 500 plus cities. In terms of the problems that we solve for, let's look at an example of what happens when we don't coordinate for our cities. So has anyone ever driven in LA? I see a lot of nods. Yeah, it's quite painful, just the traffic alone. Now imagine planning for the entire commute of LA through Uber. 
One example is when you don't coordinate and you invest in the wrong balance of our marketplace, you'll have unintended consequences and they actually cannibalize the experience for our riders and drivers. In this example, we decreased our budget for our driver incentives, but we also doubled our budgets for riders. And in terms of incentives, we actually think about them as bonuses or promotions for riders and drivers. And one example is for drivers, we pay them an extra bonus if they hit a certain number of trip targets per week. So if we decrease the bonus, what do you think would happen to those drivers for the whole week in LA? See a lot of thumbs down. We surged, and we surged at twice the amount of trips than expected. And this isn't exactly a good experience for Uber. And why is it bad? Well, to begin with, we didn't have enough supply on the road, but we overinvested in riders, so we actually had more demand based on the investments that we chose. Given that it's a zero-sum game because of the network effects of our marketplace, all the cars that were available were depleted, and most of them by promoted or discounted riders because they were less sensitive to surge. So our normal price riders were paying the premium for surge, and this overall isn't a great effect for marketplace. And in terms of profitability, it was also down as well because most of our trips that we were investing in weren't completed. We actually invested in more demand than we wanted, and the trips that we did serve were also the ones that were discounted, or they were biased towards it. So that's an example of how uncoordination can hurt our experience. Now we'll look into how do we think about balance across different time horizons, starting with real time to the next hour. In real time, we focus on the ETRs and the ETAs. The ETAs need to be within a certain time interval, and we try to reduce the variance for that. So we look at the 90th percentile on top of the average, because the 90th percentile will really indicate what type of acute customer pain that they're feeling. So 90th percentiles can mean that if your ETA looks at about four minutes average, but your worst case is 12 minutes, then that's the failure point. ETRs is for our drivers. It's the estimated time for requests. And we want to ensure that our drivers have enough flow of requests in the system as well. So we try to predict that and we try to maintain a reliable confidence range. We do that through forecasting, through grading our incentives, um, and to planning our incentives for the next hour in time geo. Here's an example of why it is so difficult to plan for this type of experience. Rush hour in San Francisco is extremely difficult because our riders and drivers are constantly moving and they're moving in different flows of traffic. In the morning, our riders do not live in the core of the city, so they're trying to get to work and they exist surrounding the city right now. But our drivers are probably, they are actually stuck in the middle of the city because they've just dropped off the early birds. Now they want to get out and they want to go somewhere with longer trips. So they're gonna head towards the popular places. And these places are SFO and SJC. But we don't want them to head over there because that just degrades the ETA. So now we're actually hurting our ETAs for riders who are up north asking for rides into their office. And in order to help drivers understand where to go, our investments include promotions or bonuses or incentives that dictate where are the best places to go. And they enable our drivers to understand what they should do in this, this situation. So this is how Marketplace plans for that, is we look into forecasting for real-time supply and demand. We look at the estimated time to requests. We look at imbalance to ensure that we know where drivers are needed. And the last piece is we actually facilitate this a week in advance with our investment systems. So we think about budgeting in real time, but we budget ahead of time weeks and months before. Now we'll go further backwards into the days, weeks, and hours. I'm sorry, months, weeks, and days. Uh, in this long-term horizon, we care about balance and growth as well, but we look at it from a different lens. In this example, we care about the growth of our riders and drivers over the course of months. And what we care most is this idea of balance for our drivers. One, one factor that we care a lot about is earning stability. So in this instance, what you're seeing is we're growing sessions and we're growing riders and our drivers are pretty, uh, pretty steady. But that's not necessarily bad because it means that our drivers are, great, are gaining higher earnings. And so this type of experience is what we think about as we plan for long-term. 
And in the opposite of that, we think about real-time experiences as well, and the trade-offs for real-time experiences relative to our balance. So here we look at the amount of supply available and the impact on ETAs. And you can see at certain point where there's an optimal ETA and you have excess supply. But that, not, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good either. Excess supply actually hurts driver earnings, as we saw. So we do need to balance between real-time excellence and flawlessness, but also thinking about long-term earnings for our drivers and, and um, reliability of earnings as well. And the last piece is balance in, uh, in general. So we're looking here at a map. This is a heat map of our city. And it's looking at both the total of the city uh, in aggregate and the center of the city. And it looks at it across time horizons of two months. And it looks across hour of day. And what you'll see here are two main trends. The first one is, we're generally supply constrained during commute hours of AM and PM. And that the city core is generally more constrained than the outer parts of the city. The other thing you'll notice is that there are certain parts of the, the year or the month in this case, where we're just supply constrained overall, regardless of where you are. And you can kind of see those as holidays because that's not part of long-term planning. That's really about adjusting for the, the shocks in the system. And you can kind of see the trade-offs of when we start planning against the imbalance and we start addressing it, which is the purple line. And of course we do this for, as I just mentioned earlier, holidays and events. So we actually have to incorporate local contexts and forecasts of events such as Mardi Gras or the Boston Marathon. And we also think about global celebrations because we're uh, across 600 plus cities. And so everything matters. Now we'll go a little bit into how we provide solutions for this problem space specifically. Our investments and forecasting team is comprised of three pillars. First one is forecasting and context. And this is about strategy context and city context. The second one is the investments hub. And this is where we make our decisions. And this is where we balance and optimize across different trade-offs for our riders, our drivers, and our city portfolios. And the third pillar is the execution analytics. And this is mostly focused on understanding the ROI of our decisions, tracking the performance, and rebasing those decisions. So specifically in forecasting, it's about supply and demand. It's focused on events, weather, and seasonality, and it applies local strategic goals as part of the, the context for the cities. The hub itself collects all the investments allocation. It optimizes spend allocation, and then it articulates the strategic needs so that anyone in our company should understand what we're trying to achieve. The last piece is facilitating execution into real-time launches of our decisions, tracking performance, and rebasing them. In terms of impact, our team currently supports over 500 cities for forecasting and investments. We support about hundreds of millions in uh, investment dollars every quarter. And this supports about 5 billion trips a year across 77 countries for our 40 million driver, riders and our 2 million drivers. Our forecasts are at 5 billion data points per minute. And we facilitate these decisions for over 1,000 decision makers in our platform. So the components of forecasts are the components of the investment system are comprised of three main things. And it's pretty straightforward based on the prior content that we care about forecasts and we incorporate them into investments. We collect strategy in terms of what's the goal, whether it's growth, reliability, trade-offs for long-term and short-term. Each city and each portfolio is different, and we have a certain amount of investments we need to allocate across all these different goals. And the last piece is we split our decisions across regions and cities and riders and drivers. They go into our investment system, which feeds into our database. They collect the cost curves for all of our campaigns and our systems. They also have an optimizer level that decides what is the right balance. And after this is done, we send those decisions downstream to our levers. And our levers need to execute these prices in real time. And they send the feedback loop to us, which refresh our cost curves for the next iteration. So to recap on the key takeaways, the first piece that we discussed is it takes months in advance to plan for real-time flawless reliability. And that the goals across those time horizons are pretty similar. We talked about balance and healthy growth from a one hour to 15 minutes. 
And we talked about balance and healthy growth from the one month to weeks advanced. And of course, this challenge is really dynamic because our riders and our drivers are constantly moving. And as you saw in the San Francisco commute example, they constantly move autonomously. And so it's not a matter of perfect matching. It's a matter of trying to match things that are, are supply and demand that are constantly moving on their own and trying to fit that perfect interval of five minutes between the two of them when they need to match. And we do this globally across 500 plus cities, helping them plan and invest for the future. And I hope your takeaway from this is that investing in our marketplace is extremely important to plan for reliability. When you request a trip, that 15 minutes of flawless experience to get home requires months in advance, and you get a glimpse of the problem space that we care about and what we solve for.